Hello ladies and gents, I'm Mr Robinson, I'm Head of Geography at Sir John Nelthorpe and I'd just like to talk to you for a little while about A-level geography at Brig 6th Form. So who will teach it? It's myself and Mr Ogle, uh, it's taught solely at SJN and we split that teaching 50-50 uh, between ourselves. What entry requirements do we ask for? Well, at least a grade five in GCSE Geography and ideally uh, five in the maths and five in English. And that helps us then sort of build on that uh, and give us a foundation to move forward and know that you've got the skills to develop uh, the analytical side of geography and the extended written side of it as well. Uh, if you've not studied geography, it's not always an issue providing that your grades uh, are good enough then we'll certainly take a look at you. You just need to come and speak to us um, and make sure that those grades are there to, to make sure that you can move on successfully. So why study geography? Well, why on earth not study geography? Um, it's never been more important, this quote tells us, uh, to study geography. Uh, and I'll let you take a little look at it. But with the global debate going on about the environment and about human and social issues and inequalities uh, it's one of those things that actually we study in geography geography is much more up to date than it used to be and it's much more sort of topical and contemporary and those are the things that we want students to be leaving having learnt about and having a real deep understanding about before they go out to whether that be university or the world of work regardless of whether they go on to study geography at university So what does a course entail then? So there's three main components um, and it splits roughly in half with regards to physical and human geography. So you can see there that we've got three sections that we study in the physical side. We study the water and the carbon cycles. Currently we study the coastal landscapes uh, and systems and we study hazards in the physical section. And we look at those in depth, but we, we look at the natural side of it, but we also look at how those interlink with the human aspect of geography as well the management side the impact on human activities uh, and not just locally but regionally and globally uh, component two is the human side of it and that's the global systems and global governance we look at changing spaces which is actually or changing places should i say which is which is a sort of newer conceptual kind of idea um, and also we look at contemporary urban environments out of that optional section Component three, then, that's actually the fieldwork investigation study. That's known as the non examined assessment. And that's where uh, students will go out, carry out their own fieldwork based on one of the topics that we cover, and they'll collect their own data and then they'll formulate a study, presenting that data, analysing that data, and coming to their own conclusions. And that one makes up 20% of the final marks. So, assessment structure then. Each of component one and component two, the human and physical, follow an exact same structure. You can see there that we've got a written exam for two and a half hours, which sounds like a huge amount after doing your GCSEs or building up to your GCSEs at this moment in time. But actually, by the time you get to the end of year 13, you're actually ready, you're prepared. Um, we've, we've built you up to that uh, successfully, hopefully, and you're ready to do that. And you find that that two hour, 30 minutes flies by. Um, and again, you can see there that you've got a range of uh, questions. So it ranges right from multiple choice to short one, two, three, four mark questions, all the way up to 20 mark essays uh, on each of those sections. Uh, and paper two, the human paper, it's got exactly the same format, which we find works really well for the students because they know what to expect on each paper, the structure of it. Um, they know how to tackle each of the questions and the expectation for each of those levelled questions. The final bit then, obviously, I've mentioned that final 20% is that personal investigation or in independent investigation where the students go out and formulate their own, their own investigation and collect their own data. Uh, and we find that this is really good for building that independent study and actually getting students working a little bit more resiliently. Um, and having to think for themselves and, and do things more for themselves. And we find that aspect is, 
is really good in terms of preparing students moving on to university. So what do we expect to develop? Well, I'll let you take a little look through that in your own time, but ultimately it's that deeper understanding of how the human and the physical world uh, interrelate uh, and interlink a, a range of different scales, not just locally, but globally, um, that human activities have a real impact on the environment and, and the physical environment actually uh, dictates much of what happens in the human environment. And we look at that and how that can be managed and how sometimes it can't be managed. Uh, and it's that sort of depth of knowledge that we're wanting students to build. We also want them to build a wide range of skills and geography is great for building these skills. And it, it kind of builds us towards these future pathways. So studying geography, I often say it's not always about content, but it's about the skills that you that you build and you develop throughout your studies. Uh, and that's going to be great for your other A-levels because you're developing analytical skills, you're developing writing skills, you formulate formulating studies of your own. Um, all those things can be applied to different subjects and support different subjects. And often what we do is we, we take skills from subjects that you're studying elsewhere, your science skills, um, your English, your written skills, and, and we use those mathematical skills and we, we apply them to real life situations. So hopefully when you go on to, to whatever it is that you do in the future, whether that be a job, something geographical or not, as the case may be, or whether that be onto university, whether that be geographical or not, you can use those skills and you can move forward uh, and you can hopefully sort of transfer those skills. So with regards to jobs, I'm not obviously going to talk through all those because we'll be here for some time, but it just gives you a little bit of an idea that there are many, many things that you could do and they're just the geographical side of things that doesn't really go into um, the, the jobs that you could do in industry, where you could apply your skills and your knowledge that are not necessarily classed as being geographical. So, but again, uh, with a little bit of research, you can find out all sorts of things that you could potentially do. Please do speak to your members of geography staff at whichever school you may be at about why you should do A-level geography. And then obviously, if you're interested in coming to join us at Brig Sixth Form, come to speak to one of us, please do get in touch.